Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm D.L. Walker, and uh, I know some of you guys here. We've worked together before. Or we've seen each other before. And um, if you are not familiar at all with my work, if you would just um, put a, a thumbs up um, if you are not familiar with my work so that I can kind of, you know, adjust my conversation and uh, make it understandable. Okay. So what I was just sharing is kind of my passion to help people, which is why I'm here, which is why I do what I do. It's why I've kind of always done what I've done, what I've been doing. I've been in some form of healthcare or exercise. Oh gosh. I mean, I started exercising at 11 months old and I started teaching um, exercise classes probably in college, like 18 years old. So, you know, just like five years ago. Um, but it has been, um, yeah, it has just been my passion to really understand the body. And the body is, I mean, humans are so complicated and so complex. I'm only feeling like at this point, after doing this now for almost 40 years, that I'm, I'm kind of getting it. I, I think I, I have a pretty good handle on it. And I think that might be why I'm starting to feel comfortable coming out in a big way, because I'm feeling very confident that I can I can help people on mass, which is what my mission is to empower people to heal themselves. And uh, I got that on it's creating online programs, actually. And I got that message back in 1998, I believe. It was probably 1998 that I finished all of my schooling. I started working and I'm like, okay, what do I do now? Because I had achieved three college degrees and, uh, and that came out. And that was before the internet was, that was just when the internet was getting started. So um, almost 30 years later, here I am. And also... I uh, created my first online program in 2015 before it became cool for everyone else to do it. I've been, I've always been a little bit ahead of the curve, I have to say. So, uh, and the, going back to the concept of a mind, body, energy program, it, um, it, you know, I was led to pursue and, and learn about different areas, even though, my background and the area that I have most experience in is, is manual therapy, um, manual physical therapy. That being said, and specializing in foot and ankle, that being said, there were the outliers who were not getting better. And I don't believe that people are incapable of getting better. I believe that if someone is not getting better, they're either not seeing the right person and doesn't mean that that person's not good. It just means what that person has to offer might not be the thing that will help that particular individual. And I wanted to help as many people as possible. And that's why I started looking at other possibilities like the energy healing and also understanding even though I had a little training in it. And honestly, my training in physical therapy included energy medicine, laser, ultrasound, electric stim. That's all energy. Those modalities have been around decades. So it's really, it's just, it is just offering energy or providing energy medicine in a different fashion than what had been contemporarily done. So I started pursuing that in um, 2022 and have um, been trying to find the best way to incorporate it into the work that I do. And I think I can finally do that now. So kind of excited. So thank you, thank you, thank you for joining me. And I'm gonna just quickly, um, you know, kind of go through a little bit of what I put together on a PowerPoint. And then I'm gonna ask some questions. So I hope everybody is had their coffee and is feeling um, revved up to give me some feedback on um, what we're going to do in this course. Have a good outline and uh, we'll see what happens. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and um, give me a moment to share my screen. 
you would think after how many years of Zoom, I would be an expert at this by now. Okay. So what I'm calling this is, you know, recovery from persistent foot problems. And it is um, really designed to create a, a balanced, stable, mobile foundation uh, for the remainder of the year, 2025, and, and going forward into the, uh, you know, into your future. And everybody's desired outcome or future is going to be unique to them. And that is, it's very personal. For, you know, a linebacker, for, you know, for a running back from the Miami Dolphins, for example, is going to have a very different goal than, um, you know, an, an elderly person wanting to stay in their home. And, and that's really important to consider, you know, as a health professional, uh, as well as, you know, when designing the course. And I, I hope to be able to include that and, and also, um, you know, give people guidance throughout the uh thing. So if you cannot see my screen, just please um, let me know that. Okay. You can unmute because I can't see anybody. Those of you, um, here's my email, support at dlwalkerconsultant.com and my website, dlwalkerconsultant.com. And okay. Um, I went a little bit over my training um, post-professionally, a uh, certified functional manual therapist with the Institute of Physical Arts. Uh, health coaching, and then the activator healer coach uh, certification. And for myself, I experienced comprehensive or functional medicine when I was 14. I had warts on my fingers, seven out of 10 of them. And um, very self-conscious, went to a traditional doctor. He um, tried to burn them off, tried Spanish fly, tried cutting them out, did not work. It was under a lot of pain. And um, we had a family friend who was into you know, holistic health back in, this is 1985. And she had a chiropractor that she liked going to who happened to be nearby, Dr. John Rapallo, um, who's probably dead now, but I went to him and he analyzed my hair and, uh, you know, use laser. And I still do use laser uh, for the skin as well as changed my diet and did alternative things. My warts were gone in three months and never came back. And I understood the importance of nutrition. It changed the trajectory of my, probably my, myself, my, my own personal health and my career, because I've always been open to, since that time, alternative forms of healing. Uh, I said in 1998, I was told to empower people to heal themselves uh, on, the in on the internet. In 2008, I began teaching uh, balance enhancement ball, pre ball prevention to professionals. That's where I got interested in the foot. 2015, I said, created my first online program. In 2022, we went through this. Um, I love this saying about a healer is not someone that you go to for healing. A healer is someone that triggers within you your own ability to heal yourself. And that is what I've always believed. And I, I think we're kind of moving toward that a little bit more. Don't get me wrong. Um, I don't believe that some of you will be able to do on yourselves as good a job as what I could probably do. And at the same time, there are probably a lot of people who have some of the same training that I do who would not be effective on you as well. And I also believe that men, you know your body better than anyone else and you know what's going to work for you and what's not going to work for you. And that's why on my programs, you, there is that um, trial period to see if this is the right fit. Okay. Um, also, I really am big into facilitating an atmosphere of collaboration among professionals to serve the public as a team, which is why I was at that Mind Body event yesterday with all those cool people offering so many different modalities. So if you're not getting results from me, one of the things I encourage people to do is schedule in an evaluation strategy call because I know a ton of people who may be able to help you. And I know a plethora of modalities. So, um, and that's why I have Dr. Bob on the call. What do I want to do? I want to help people get their lives back ASAP. And this is my new treatment strategy protocol that um, I'm going to go through in a little, a little bit. But at this point, what I want to do is I want to get a sense from you guys about what your goals are. Now, if you don't know what your goals are or what your desired future is, Think about where you are now and then just write the opposite. 
<laughs> so if you're not able to walk, you know, down the block or you're not able to navigate stairs or you're having difficulty, um, you know, with mobility or you're having pain with certain activities, th then write the, write the opposite of that. And if you don't feel like sharing it with me um, publicly here, I would love it if you could share it privately so that I can get a sense when I'm going through this to be able to kind of um, speak to you in a confidential, in a manner that is more private or confidential, unless you want to, um, you know, again, book into a session with me where we can go through it. And um, I'm happy to put that link up as well. Um, anybody willing to share what their goals are <laughs> or what their desired outcome is? Uh, I did already hear from, um, I did already hear from, uh, who was it? Okay. Um, one of you about some of the stuff that you're you're challenged with at the moment, but is it about looks? Is it about comfort in shoes? Um, is it just about being having a better stable base? Because we're going to cover all of that um, in the program. And I'll share with you why. So if no one is willing to share, then I will. I'll share my goal. Because I actually do. Mom said he was. I'm sorry. Sophia's iPad hand is up. Oh, you have? I'm so sorry. Hand is up. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, I'm not seeing that, so I apologize. This is Sophie. My hand is up. I'll call him out. Okay, I'll call great. him out for go you. Go ahead. Um, let's go, Dr. Bob, and then we'll go, Sophie. Go ahead, Dr. Bob. What's your goal? What's what's your desired outcome? Well, Me well, or I'm, Dr. First of all, Bob? Very, I'm sorry. What? I Sophie, didn't know did whom she's calling. Oh yes, I called oh. Dr. Bob first, okay, and then you can go, you. Sophie. Okay. So I'm go I'm, I'm really uh, very. Uh, excited about the work that you do i've actually gotten treated by you which is fabulous and uh uh what i'm really interested in, and i'm a holistic healer as healing facilitator i like, like the way you put that um and i know how important it is to address the person as a whole and i want to know i want to learn how you connect the footwork to the head work to the every work yeah. to all the work is because in the past I haven't been, I've been, we, you and I together were so focused on the foot and I'm thinking, well, wait a minute, you know, uh, you taught me that are you, you, I learned from you the importance of having a stable foundation, mm -hmm. you know, like it's like a building, you know, you can't have the human body standing up and walking around without a stable foundation. So I really am interested in gleaning or understanding how the, all the manual footwork and all the other work that you do relates to that whole human being from bottom to top. Yeah. And that's only one thing Then I, I've got some trouble with my knees. I've always had, you know, I've had three ACL uh, surgeries after football accidents and skiing accidents. And, uh, you know, right now I'm diagnosed with bone on bone. I can walk, I can bike, I can swim. Uh, but jumping and running is out of the question. Lateral movements are not so great. And, uh, I would love to um, understand if I can avoid uh, mm. knee replacement surgery. That'd be really wonderful. And get back to jumping and running and doing all the other good stuff. Excellent. Okay. Um, go ahead, Sophie. And then I see Audrey. Um, I have a hip problem. Yes, that and, I know. Yeah. yeah. And, and it, it results probably from my childhood bed alignment and also with my uh, right ankle. Okay. And uh, my goal is to get treatment from you and come to Sarasota. Yay! We need visitors. We're opening <laughs> up. We're opening up. So yes, please come. The water's looking better. The key is pretty. Yeah, it's pretty good. If um one of the things um actually when you join, uh I'm including a private group on Telegram for um the the full price correct size members and. Um, and I have been posting from Siesta Key and another, uh, local place where I'm sharing just kind of ideas that are coming to mind and yeah, just kind of relating it to, to what's in my environment. So you can see for yourself. All right. Thank you. All right, Audrey. And then Kathy. Hi there. Um, Hi. I have a bunion. Mm -hmm. 
and I am doing weightlifting right now. And I just noticed whenever I'm doing one leg work, I my balance is really terrible. Um, I have some pain in the bunion and yeah, just wanting to um, have better balance and stability and foot mobility, toe, toe yeah. mobility. Okay, great. And Kathy. Hey there. <laughs> I have had the uh, yeah the honor of having DL at my place up in the Adirondacks. I have a small resort. Um, we're turning it's it more into a, by the way. A, a wellness resort, um, building a kitchen behind our retreat center. So I have the same feeling as working with a team is imperative. Um, um, at whether yeah same thing. And I too feel that th this is. I'm getting my programs going too. Um, I actually teach block therapy, which they have just, you know, the big thing is feet now and feet, blah, blah, blah. And I know I'm not doing enough. I had a, um, so I'm like, yeah, feet are very intricate. So, and even though I'm an occupational therapist by degree profession, um, we work with hands. We split them up. You know how that goes with OTPT. Not really, but that's okay. Um, but uh, I had something going on with my legs for two or three months where I could barely get up, walk, like it came on kind of all of a sudden. And I was like, whoa, you know what I do. This is not acceptable. Yeah. But then I said, okay, this is this is not acceptable. And I'm like, Kathy, you have tools, do them. In, 24, in 48 hours, it was gone. Okay. And, and so I know miracles can happen. Um, but my foot still hurts and um, my right foot. Um, I do have bunions on both, but my right foot, um, same thing as my daughter, which I was hoping to get her join, mm -hmm. but she's like, no, not until they do my MRI, but she has a friend who has had foot surgery, foot problems, so she may join in, so I hope so. Great. So, yeah, awesome. so nice to be here. Thank you for offering. Yeah. Hey, Lori. Thank you. Uh, so I don't know if you got, I sent an email to you this morning. Um, but it was, you might not have been in your email. I did not uh, see it yet. Yeah. I'm sorry. Anyways, um, you know, I know we've met and we're going to do some privates. Um, and for me, um, it's been a real struggle uh, just emotionally dealing with just foot pain. Yeah. It, um, it affects everything, you know, when, when we're not able to do the things that we love with the people that we love and we don't have that independence it sucks. It sucks. And uh, that's, I, you know, if something has started, you know, the, the, again, the impetus or the, the, the start could be, you know, physical or emotional, or um, there can be also some psychological associations. Those are, those are things that are out there. And, and again, it doesn't mean that everybody, um, has all of those things. What I do find though, the longer something progresses, the more that it will affect those other areas. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's so important to try to get help quick and right. recover quickly. Right. And you know, it's, um, it's been 10 months since I put surgery. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, when we also look at surgeries and, and, and in general, is that I think what surgeons tend to fail to recognize is that particularly in the lower leg, we're going to be compensating mm -hmm. prior to surgery for a period of time before we get the surgery. And mm -hmm. afterwards, there's not great care. And this is another reason why I think I was called to do the foot is because physical therapist, my training, and, and I trained with, I, someone who I believe is, is one of the most talented physical therapists in the world. And when I trained with him, I don't know how it is now. The foot was not his thing. I, you know, I could tell it's, it's not his, it wasn't his passion. He doesn't even teach the foot class any, um, that they offer. And this is with the Institute of Physical Art, but he only worked from, from here up. He didn't work the toes or the, the forefoot. So <laughs> needless to say, um, I s kind of made my specialty this, this area right here. Um, and because I know the impact that this can make on the rest of the body, as well as what this, the, the midfoot and, and higher mm -hmm. up can make on the foot. Yeah. 
And so this is where I think I've been challenged to. Yeah, absolutely. Um, maybe not, maybe not today though. Okay. Um, so I was just answering Dr. Bob privately. Uh, so what I have come up with or what I've taught in the past is very like segmented, like toes and then metatarsals and then tarsals and then and what I'm feeling now, what I'm feeling guided to is to work in patterns. So the way that I'm seeing this, and you guys can tell me just by giving me a thumbs up or, or not. Um, I'm sorry, Audrey, Audrey, did we answer your question before I go on? Because I still see your hand up. Okay, I don't think it was taken yeah, down. I just I forgot think... to put it down. Okay, no worries. Okay. Um, I didn't want to be rude. Um, so what I'm thinking about is doing patterns, patterns, because what's going on with the big toe will affect the arch of the foot, the heel of the foot, the lower leg and the thigh. Same thing, what's going on with the fifth toe, same thing that's going on with the, um, the middle toes, two through four, that they go in patterns. And so same thing with like a flat foot versus a supinated foot or a high arched foot right? It's all in patterns. And I'm really feeling aligned to addressing the pattern. And so what it's looking like is on week two, um, and we're going to do a, a reset next week. So week two um, is going to be the big toe, the arch, the heel, the lower leg and thigh. Week three is going to be the fifth toe, the arch, the heel, the heel, lower leg and thigh. Sorry. Weeks two and three are going to be big toe, arch, heel, lower leg, thigh. And I think what I'm going to do is potentially make it big toe for a high arch, big toe for a flat foot and make those separate classes. And that way people can have it be more aligned to what they need. And then also on the week that you're not getting the the live. Okay, let me ask. I'm gonna see. I'm asking for feedback. How does this sound? Maybe doing two 90 minute courses, one for the high arch people and one for the low arch people on weeks two and three. I think that sounds better. Thumbs up rather than alternating weeks. So the time might be different. So you might have a start time of, you know, 1230 versus 11. Is that okay with people or no? Thumbs up or thumbs um, down? So Dale, um, does that mean like if I have a high arch, I'm not going to be on the low arch? You're more than welcome no? to come to it. Um, but I'm feeling that what is going to be more appropriate is mm -hmm. the, the other stuff, um, is the stuff for the high arch people. Mm -hmm. okay. And obviously things will be recorded. So, you know, you can, you can do that. How does that sound to people? I got one thumbs up. Do we like that idea? Rather than have some confused people by having it be, and that way I can also incorporate, I'd love to incorporate some taping, and what I will do is I will, prior to that week, um, you know, let you know what to be prepared to bring. Um, and I think for, in most cases, if I'm going to be doing patterns, I will include um, that in my, my um, orientation email. Because there are certain things that I like to use. Um, obviously, dynamic tape for people who have a structural dysfunction, right? They need to be held, they need support. People who are in pain, that's the better one. People with bunions, that's the better tape. Um, the other people who, uh, you know, might have some other things, kinesio tape would be probably just fine. But I, I do tend to like the dynamic tape better uh, for, in general, because, I'm so emphatic about alignment. Once you get the alignment, everything else is easy. Getting alignment back is challenging, can be very challenging, especially if it's not structural. 
<laughs> um, structurally related, or there's uh, a lack of mobility that's not structurally related. And uh, that's that's when I tend to turn to some other ideas. Okay, so I think that's that's probably, can you help people know whether they have a high arch or a flat foot? Um, yes, if you don't know, then your foot's probably not an extreme of one or the other, okay? Um, but the easiest thing to do would be to wet your foot and then um, look at your footprint. And you can, um, if you do that like on paper, uh, you can share that that with me. Um, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, the other thing is usually when you have a flat foot, you kind of know it. You, you, if you're standing, you really have a hard time getting the, like a pen or anything underneath the arch of your foot. Go ahead, Lori. <laughs> now that I've composed myself, I didn't realize I was going to be emotional. Oh, no, what I was no it's all good. With you this, guys. Is a, um, this is a safe space. This yeah, is, no, yeah. it just, uh, between that and my, my elbow, it's just come over yeah. it. But anyways, um, I know you know, because we've been working and we'll work privately, but I am I do have incredibly terrible gait on my left foot from the surgery. And I can't even put my full weight on my big toe joint mm -hmm. now. So um, in the middle of my foot, you know, it has a lot of pain. So it's pushing my weight over to the outside of my foot. Um, but how do we work with a big toe that I really am having such a hard time putting my full weight on even still after 10 months. Right. Gently. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then also, and gradually also um, using the tape. So the, the black eco dynamic tape can, uh, can offset forces by 33 pounds of force. Mm -hmm or put you into. So it can be very, very supportive. It's like the next best thing that I know of to like a cast on the big toe, which they don't do for obvious reasons. So that would be um, the appropriate thing. And then also I think because we're working in patterns, that will be of good benefit to you because mm -hmm. we'll be able to address the other areas that contribute to the big toe weight and distribution of forces. And also if you and I are work, you and I will be working together mm -hmm. privately. So I think we'll be, I think we'll be okay. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions with that? Okay. So yeah, like I said, weeks two and three will be the big toe, the arch, the heel, the lower leg. I will probably, um, I will split those up into two separate groups. Like I said, I'm shooting for about 90 minutes and you can come on if you're on either group and you have a one-on-one -on -one question, you can come in, um, obviously. And then also I'll go into the um, the Telegram app as well, which is uh, another way that you can kind of reach out to me um, and the group. And uh, I'll talk about that in a second. And then on weeks three, Four, sorry, four and five. We'll do the fifth toe, the arch, the lower leg, five uh, thigh, and then week six and seven, the toes, uh, two through four, the arch, the lower leg, thigh, and week eight will be a new reset. So the idea is to reset, right, to go to the next level, right, the next octave, so to speak. In energy, we talk about octaves, right, the next, uh, the next step in your progress. So the idea is that this, be, you know, that each time that you do a reset, you take it to the next level. And that's the idea. That is what I kind of love about the things that I do. Sometimes I do a lot of Pilates, usually in the summer. I, I go to a, a studio where I, where I summer in Rhode Island. And what's exciting for me is that every year I get better at Pilates, even though I won't do it for like 10 months. And then I'll go back and it's like, I'm better at it. Same thing with yoga. Like I'll, I, you know, there's a lot of times right now I'm really in a hot yoga phase and I just get better when, you know, because I just continue to learn. I continue to tune in more in my body. I continue to make modifications. And for me, that's super exciting to get better with age. 
um, versus the opposite. And also feeling progress also in mindset. Um, and uh, yeah, and so I'll, I'll, I'll speak about mindset too, because um, language is super important. And language also has energy. The words that we speak have um, actually color, they have frequency, and they have light. Color, color, frequency, I'm sorry, and frequency is sound and sound. Um, so you're perceived on a bunch of different levels, maybe not consciously, but subconsciously. And in fact, there are people, uh, I, my former assistant could see auras in people's words, which is, I think, super cool. And the importance of the choices of words, right? Dr. Bob did a really good job where he said, um, I've been given a diagnosis of. Because to take on I have is a very powerful um, word. And I could speak about this for hours, how important this is. And it is something, you know, it's not hocus pocus. This is something that I learned in physical therapy school 35 years ago, where we were never, ever, 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 never allowed to say to a patient, you're bad blank, ever. <laughs> ever <laughs> that was a no-no did they teach you I'm sure they taught you that in OT school too right Kathy no oh my gosh yeah okay maybe it was my school but it was like it was a big no-no because our words are powerful they're extremely powerful I was at the coffee shop this morning I didn't correct her <laughs> but the lady behind the counter is like I never I never get gifts I never this I never that and I'm like, you're cursing yourself. And what I did say to her, I'm like, I think you deserve to receive is what I what I said, because I was like, just stop saying that you're, you're, you're cursing yourself. You're, you're. <laughs> um, so it's really one of the things about mindset is really being conscious of how you speak, not only to other people, but also to yourself. Right. And. Um, I think as humans these days, however we were raised, we were taught to be, you know, really, really hard on ourselves and not kind to ourselves. Sometimes, you know, really, you know, I would speak much worse to myself than I would ever about anybody else. And I, I, I think maybe that's why one of the reasons why, you know, um, there are suicides and, and there are, you know, we live in the society that sometimes is really unkind um, to one another. So I really being mindful about this, you know, this aspect about your physicality. And I would also say, and I would also argue for some reason, my mindset has always been that I will figure out the answer to my problem. And I always have hasn't always been easy. Uh, and I think that was part of the reason why I was challenged in my life health-wise so that I could figure it out and then also help you guys figure it out. Yes, uh, yes, words and language, super, super important. So um, I used this example yesterday in my class where I was talking about sacred geometry. I said, you know, because, you know, we're all in Sarasota, and um, for those of you who aren't familiar, Sarasota was a direct hit with her, uh, Hurricane Milton. And so I said, you know, think about the difference between high vibrational words or neutral vibrational words and low vibrational words. So the difference between we experienced a weather event in Sarasota, right, which we did. It's honest. We're not lying. It was a weather event versus a category three hurricane you know, which is more destructive or which is higher vibrational, which one sounds more toward a positive outcome, the weather event. So, you know, I, that I'm really, for some of you, this might be brand new um, and it takes practice. And so with regard to that, I'm going to share with you my new model, which I was talking about. Uh, and this is kind of based on whew, um, 
all of my experience from PT school, tell me that you can see this when I put it up or tell me if you cannot see this. Yes, if you can't see it, just unmute because again, I can't see you. We can, we can see it. Excellent, thank you. All right, mm. so this is the model and I'm actually gonna probably shift it a little bit because I used to start with release. And I really do believe, and I've heard from other people like Brendan Burchard, who's an expert in high performance, that the first thing on your to-do to -do list uh, needs to be your intention. What's your intention? What is your desired outcome from the thing that you're going to do? Is it going to be hard or is it going to be easy? This is where we go back to mindset. Sometimes... I dread, <laughs> I still have a printer that doesn't work because I, I just, I, I dread going onto the chat to try to fix it and spend like two hours. Um, but that's my, that's my mindset, right? And so I'm already, and I'm going to use a hard word here. I'm, I'm going to say I'm already sabotaging, okay? I'm already sabotaging the outcome, <laughs> By feeling that. And I think that's probably why I haven't done it because I know that I then need to release, right, the mindset that I have around it. And then I need to align to the new one that I'm choosing. Like, this is going to be easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I'm going to be done in 15 minutes. And then reinforce that idea. And that involves some, some interesting things. Um, from an energy standpoint, obviously from the mindset standpoint, but really in energy work, um, I've been taught about timelines and we've had, you know, timelines from our past, but in the future, our timelines are infinite. It's almost like going into your refrigerator and being like, do I want an orange or do I want blueberries or do I want this or do I want that? There are a lot of possibilities, but once you make your decision, all those other timelines collapse, I'm told. So it is about aligning to that future timeline that you are choosing. And sometimes that requires dissolving of past experiences, dissolving those the energy of the emotions of those past experiences, because thinking, oh, no, I'm going to have to go through this again. Um, and having that experience can influence, can and does influence the outcome. And so there's um, meditations that I am um, aware of that I'm going to ask for permission to somehow share with you. It might be through a Facebook group. So just be aware of that. So hopefully all of you are on Facebook or if not, you're willing to go on Facebook just for this, unless I can get permission from my, my uh, instructor. Because he teaches, that's his bread and butter. He teaches it way better than I do. And he has a bunch of lessons online. So, um, you know, there's no reason for me to to uh, to do that um, when he does it better. And I really know it because of, of him. And that's uh, Marcus Bird. Uh, and he is, um, he's based out of Australia. Okay. Now going back, so that is um, that is the 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 um, the the plan really. So release is about freeing or resetting. Is actually we 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 reflect on the past because sometimes that's what we need to get our desired outcome. So it's reflection and clarification on what that is, and then the intention to do it with ease. <laughs> with ease, right? Because we don't want, if we say, you know, this is going to suck, uh, I'm going to have to spend my, my Sunday mornings with her um, or, you know, whatever. And, you know, put it, it, it then it's really, you, you're going to have a tough time. You're going to have a really tough time. And then we get into release. And this comes up again in body, mind, energy, um, inflammation, irritation, and we're going to transmute transmutation is um, dissolving timelines and creating new ones because energy cannot be created nor destroyed. It can only change its form. I believe that was Einstein in physics. So um, it's important that we 
again, transmute that energy into something else. So a lot of times it's, you know, transmuting the energy of what we don't want, right? So um, I am trans consciously transmuting the energy uh, around the repair uh, and reset of my printer uh, into a experience that is going to be joyful and fun and easy. That's, you know, and then I have to believe it, <laughs> which means I might have to dissolve some of those timelines and trans and, and just let them free them, free them from my energetic field is what it looks like. And again, uh, when I speak to Marcus, I, some of you I know might be on his Facebook group, but it's called Heart of the Matrix. So if you are not on Heart of the Matrix in Facebook, I would recommend going on to it because then I can I can direct you to some really uh, cool meditations that I use. It's called Heart of the Matrix. It is a private group. Um, it is very energy based, uh, and there are some really great posts. So just um, request, and if he doesn't let you in, let me know, and I will get you in. Okay. All right. Um, then. When we get back to, we have a release, then we uh, realign. And that is about making our choices, right? Both in uh, mindset, so mentally, structurally, right? That's with tape and also teaching you how to do it. But, you know, if you're stuck structurally, you're never going to be able to realign. That's why we have to release first. Same thing. If you're stuck in your mindset, you're never going to be able to realign because you have that past stuff. It, or language, right? Impeding your progress. So we have to release first, then realign. Then um, the next one is reinforce. And that is repetition practice. It's also correction, right? Catching yourself. The other day I caught myself. I said something that, that was sabotaging. I forgot what it was, but there was something that was sabotaging that I said, and I had to, refer oh, I think I said I had a busy day. Mm -mm -mm. Mm, mm, mm. I had an active day. I had a productive day, right? Busy. Do I want busy in my life? Do I want crazy in my life? Do I want stressful in my life? No. Challenging is okay. Again, not lying. You're just choosing a different word, right? Because words have energy and they have power. They have a lot of power. Um, I mean, there are there are biblical sayings that I can't think of off the top of my head. Kathy, maybe you can help me out with this. Um, but biblical sayings about uh, the word, the power of the word. So anyway, super, super, super important. Um, so that's you catching yourself, correcting, correcting your thoughts, correcting that mindset, correcting, oh, geez, you know what? I need to dissolve that timeline. <laughs> um, so... That has been, um, that's been something I've been doing quite a bit of, not just with the body, but other areas. And then um, practice, repetition, and then eventually after a million repetitions or so, um, we have a repatterning. So these things come more normal. And in motor learning, um, and again, I don't know about mindset training, Dr. Bob, maybe you can help me after I give this little fact. But in motor learning, apparently it takes a million repetitions to have something become unconscious learned. And so taping really helps with that. Because if you wear dynamic tape, I think I figured it out, and we counted one second as a repetition, I think it takes 11.2 days of wearing the tape. Hey, Dr. Bob, do you have any 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 um, input on on habit, on uh, the changing the, the, the amount yeah, of time? Yeah. Yeah, I would say that, uh, okay, I'm just going to be, I'm always, I'm always, you know me, I'm always straight. So I'm just going to be really straight here. First of all, I'm sure there's no data that it, uh, on no data that's been collected or tested that it takes a million repetitions, right? Uh, I'm sure there's no data on that. Nobody's ever done a study on that. So somebody speculated that. And uh, um, no, I actually learned it in motor learning in college. Yeah, I but remember I, I, random stuff from like 30, from like 40 years ago. Yeah. Yeah, the that question was one is, of the things that I remember. I usually remember things that I still speak to now. And yeah. it's so interesting because I can't even remember the passcode I just put in for my, you know, 
<laughs> for my email. <laughs> so I get it. Um, I get it. Yeah, yeah. I get it. The, the, so regardless whether there's whether there were studies done or not, um, I think you, you know I like the way you talk about timelines and you know if you're on if you're on a timeline that's having you sabotage yourself, you want to get off that one and get on something else. Um, so I think that saying that it takes a million repetitions. Uh, I think it kind of feeds into the fact that, you know, how long does it take to do a million repetitions of something? Well, I've probably never done a million repetitions of anything in my life. I think maybe I have, but I'm not sure. Steps. Uh, I'm, sure, for breathe, I'm maybe, sure you've taken maybe, over a million steps in your life. Possibly. I'll have to, I'll have to calculate it. I can calculate that, you know, <laughs> um, because it's pretty easy to calculate. But the point is, is that, uh, um, but the thing is, if you need to make a change in your gait, if it takes a million repetitions to change the gate, I say, wait a minute, let's just put aside our thinking that it takes a million repetitions. Let's just say that change can happen quickly and easily mm -hmm. with the right input. And you give that's the right true. input. Yeah. You give the right input. So, you know, and I give Why? the right input. So, so that's what my point is. I would say, let's just uh, put that on the back burner and go for making change fast and easy. And it can really happen in, um, I don't know, a few repetitions, let's say. That's what I'm that's I think my, if you get my the right, timeline I, about it. I, th I think if you address the right root cause, it change can happen very quickly. Very that's what I say, yeah. Quickly, yeah. Very quickly. The challenge is finding it and then figuring it out. And yeah. That's and then providing the right input, not not necessarily the right input, but an input that works. Yeah, that's for sure. Because there's so I think there's probably a, a bunch of different inputs that could work. Mm -hmm. The question is, is it one infinite of the possibilities? That's, that's effective. Yeah. Yeah. And, as opposed and, to uh, yeah. as opposed to a myriad of others that are not effective. You know. Right, and and I think that that's that's where the challenge is. Is that it is about finding the right system with the the right clinician or, or professional that's going to work for you. And for some people. You know, that might be craniosacral or, you know, some other thing. And and what I tell people, including anybody who, who works with me, um, I don't keep people going unless I'm getting results. If I'm not getting results, then what I'm teaching or what I'm, I'm showing them is not the root cause. And that's why when those situations come up, I like to refer out or try maybe energy work. Um, in conjunction with the manual work, which works really well. I don't think she's on the call, um, but there was a client, Arlene, earlier. Now she she left. Arlene, who, um, you know, has done very, very well with clinicians locally to her in Canada with um, with energy work with me and having, you know, the programs also available to her. Okay. Anybody else have, uh, are you complete Dr. Bob? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for letting me. Uh, yeah. Put yeah, something for in. Sure. I appreciate it. yeah. And, and why don't you tell everybody a little bit, like if you can, um, your, your elevator pitch in like, you know, 30 seconds, <laughs> what you do. Sure. sure. Yeah. So, uh, Dr. Bob Levine, I have a PhD in, um, pharmacology, an expert in drugs and mechanism of action and uh, specializing in brain research, neurology and psychiatry. I did that for many years and I got into holistic health, uh, much like most of the healing facilitators did who are uh, not quite in mainstream uh, uh, healthcare as I had problems with the back and, back and hip that I had to solve. And I was able to solve that through non-insurance covered alternative therapies. And then I started training myself and getting training in many different modalities. And so now I have been practicing for over 25 years, holistic health. Um, specializing in chronic pain relief, stress relief, and uh, symptoms of stress-related conditions, which is just about every other condition on the planet. So, um, you know, relieving stress is so important. I've always said that you can't get somebody fully out of pain unless you're addressing the unless we're addressing uh, relieving the stress as well. So, I'm going to stop there, and thank you for giving me uh, 45 seconds. I appreciate it. <laughs> My pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you, and thank you for being here. All right. So, uh, yeah. Oh, I have another question for you guys. I need feedback for this um, model that I shared with you. 
um, because I am, again, um, understanding the power of words. There's a couple of things. In marketing, they like to do things in palettes. So all of the R's is kind of cool. However, um, the word release, re means to do over and lease is like an agreement. So I feel like I really want to change this thing to say free, align, practice, and reset. Can you give me a thumbs up if you like that? If you think that's good. What, what's the very first? Is the first one free. Free. free? free. Free is a great word. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling this also. So, um, yeah, too bad marketing. <laughs> so free line practice release. I might, I might pick a new word for practice, but it is basically reinforces pra is practice. And, uh, we had, um, in my PNF training, we used to say, um, guide, assist, resist, repeat. That's a good one too. So first you guide the body, then you, uh, assist, Right. So first you do it for somebody, then you assist them, then you resist them, and then you just repeat. And that is uh, another modality that I think I'm going to go into because in proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation or PNF, there are specific patterns in the body that are facilitatory that are pretty much designed and um put in a, in a way that certain characteristics occur. One of which is irradiation to the core. Okay, so it facilitates core muscle contraction. Okay, also you are at the greatest strength and the greatest stability when you are in pattern. So um, yeah, PNF is, is a really fascinating modality. Most people, including most um clinicians uh, are unaware of the power of it. And by the way, words and tactile influences are very, very important. They use a multi-sensory, um, they use a multi-sensory, it is a, I should say, it is a multi-sensory modality because you're taught about your voice, talked about the voice, right? You talked about your tactile cues and, uh, and it, uh, it also uh, um, has quite a bit to do with rotation and rotation is a, something that comes up in the energy work also. So I had all of these synchronicities. I, I do not feel that anything in my life has been an accident that I've learned. So, all right. So we have the new, um, the new, um, I'll have to get that changed. And then does anybody else have any questions or feedback or comments? Um, oh yeah, in this in this picture, which I don't think I uh, I don't think I shared my screen, sorry. All right. You might wonder why there's a sink. Um, I kind of say that I have a kitchen sink principle, which means I throw everything at a problem to get the solution. So that includes the mindset, the energy, the physical stuff, um, P, you know, again, PNF, other patterns. Um, obviously, inflammation is a huge thing that 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 can be addressed. And maybe, Dr. Bob, you can help us with some um, ideas about how people can uh, help with inf um, inflammation, maybe in a natural way, some of the good stuff, because that is not my expertise. So that would be awesome. And, um, yeah, obviously to take away the irritation, like you were talking about, Lori, is to make modifications, um, possibly in footwear and such. And again, I can connect people with people locally. Um, uh, when, you know, you're, you're asking, yeah, well, you're asking about, um, the, you know, what we think about this, uh, diagram yeah. and I'm, I'm thinking that. I don't know where to actually start with the diagram. What's the tra trajectory through the diagram? Maybe yes. some arrows would, would be. Yeah, uh, good yeah. idea. I was I was also going to put reset on top because I think mm -hmm. it's going to be reset, release, realign, reinforce, then reset. Mm -hmm. Yep. And thank you. Yeah, good idea. Good when idea. you say reset, what do you mean? That means that is about reflecting on the past, right? Um, 
getting clear on the next step and then making the uh, having the intention to do so what is your intention from it okay yeah Thank you. if you can think of a better word i'm open to it yeah um yeah so, i'm not sure but i just was wondering about that one <laughs> yeah yeah no worries and and like i said maybe there is a, a better word if anybody can think of it please do put it in the um the messages in the chat anyone else uh yeah. Anybody else want to um, share, contribute, offer feedback? Anything? Oh, Telegram. Okay. So when um, when you are a full member of uh, Correct to Size, right? So that's after a seven day trial um, of the one dollar, and you're paying forty four a month, right? So again, the one dollar seven day, then you're billed afterwards. And again, you can cancel at any time. There's no, um, there's no obligation to stay, especially if it's not helping you. <laughs> I don't, I want you to find your solution. That, that is my goal for sure. Uh, and um, so there is an app that I use called Telegram, T-E-L-E-G-R-A-M, T-E-L-E-G-R-A-M. And you can put it on your laptop. You can also put it on your cell phone. And what it, um, you can speak. I can't, um, unfortunately I cannot um, shorten my screen, but you can, um, you can actually speak on it. You can shoot video, you could type in a message. So you could do an audio, a video, a typing message. You can film video and upload. And if you have anything to share that you're, or looking for support or having a question, you know, put it in the Telegram uh, app. I, I want it to be a supportive community. I want us to work together to co-create. Um, I'm really feeling good about that. And so, you know, feel free to 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 post. I, I will post. And I'll probably have a um, another one that is, um, you know, for the, just the general public who aren't as far as uh, correct to size, but I, I don't, I don't want to overburden myself. So probably not. Um, anyway, so that is, um, yeah, that's an app that, uh, I like to use and like to communicate that way. I've struggled on Facebook to be honest and, and telegram is easy and I'm all about easy these days, right? We're making things easy and fun, fun and easy. My new mantra, my new reset is fun and easy. Okay. And I'd love it for it to be yours as well. And hopefully I can um, be, six, I, not hopefully, um, I will do my best to be successful uh, in helping guide you in that direction. And, and it, once again, if I'm, you know, this system is not helpful for you, there's a very good chance I know of other possibilities that may be of benefit and um, good people. That's one thing I have to say uh, about professionals is that when you when you know somebody good, good people know good people. So if you're in a situation where you're looking for somebody locally or a, or a professional in something, I'll use an example that I use down here. Um, we have a, a cancer center that's uh, internationally known for prostate cancer. So that is male um, urology, right? So I had somebody who uh, needed a good kidney sur uh, surgeon for kidney stone. So what did I do? I called the cancer center. I said, who's a good surgeon locally? And they gave me a name. Bingo. Good people know good people. Remember that. So, um, yeah. And uh, people are not going to, you know, Unless they're in a group, like a B, you know, some groups that people are kind of um, encouraged to refer to other good people, but the ones that aren't affiliated, are, and sometimes, unfortunately, in um, medical groups, off, oftentimes too, you're going to refer to people in the group. Uh, but if people are independent and they're referring to another independent person, they um, they are somebody who's trusted. And uh, again, that's why I have Dr. Bob here. And I would also recommend Kathy 
because I have stayed at Lake Clear, which is her resort in Lake Plas uh in the Lake Placid area in the Adirondacks. I'm sorry I missed you. I was up there a couple of weeks ago. It was absolutely beautiful. Um, and I love her her lodge. Um, so yeah, if you want to put your website on there and I'm so excited for you turning it into a wellness center. I was looking at Omega today, which is another for you guys, another kind of, um, uh, holistic place in, um, uh, in New York, but it's, uh, closer to the city than in the Adirondacks, but the Adirondacks are beautiful and, uh, Lake Clear is also, they have sleigh rides in the winter. Kathy is a great cook. Um, it overlooks the lake. And how long has it been in the family now? Um, well, it was kind of a weird thing. 1886, my great aunt and uncle built it. And then it was sold out of the family. And then the third owner was my husband's parents that I used to work for when I was 14. And then we're back operating it. And uh, I didn't think we had one more project in us, but here we go. Because now we're on the bike trail. Oh, great. So, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Wonderful. Wonderful. Yeah. Great. So check it out if uh, you're looking for a place in the Adirondacks. All right. Um, I think I'm complete in the things that I wanted to ask, getting the ideas of, of what you guys are looking for. And I really do um, feel good about the strategy. So uh, if anybody else uh, doesn't have any questions, I think we'll uh, go and enjoy the rest of our day. How's that sound? And easy, right. fun. Thank and, you. Uh, Thank you. So, right. Yael, will you be before the next, before next Sunday, just letting us know what we need to be prepared to be doing? Yeah. So, yeah, I can do that right now because um, we are going to go more specifically into the reset. Okay. So that mm -hmm. is going to be my focus. Yeah, we really do. I think we need to be clear on the intention. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe have a little bit more practice on this. And mm -hmm. um, I'd love to offer some more resources of places that you can find information mm -hmm. um, to, to help, you know, if what I'm saying is not resonating with you and mm -hmm. maybe Dr. Bob, maybe you can provide some resources also, if you're cool with that. Um, you're muted. I created a pretty cool uh, free uh, course online called Ooh. How to Walk Your Way Out of Chronic Pain. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'm going to give you the link to that first, DL, so you can look at it because, you know, without your uh, approval, I'm not going to say anything about it to this group. Uh, you need to look at it and see if you think it's worth You know what, Dr. Bob? <laughs> Just post it because here's my thing. Um, I'm not in competition with anyone. It's all about collab collaboration. And so there are going to be people that, you know, will find it helpful. I'm certain. So you go ahead and post it. Where, where should I put, what's the best place to post it? Okay. Um, that's good good chat. Post it right here. <laughs> in the chat. You can I'll post it right it. here in the chat. Um, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do yeah. that. Hang on a second. Yeah, in fact, I got it right here. Perfect. So I'm just going to put it in there. Hold on. And I, um, I will take a look at it also. Um, I would like that. I like your feedback because it's, it's a, it's a short course. It's only about 13 or 14 minutes. Um, but it gives the essence of it. And um, I give the cautionary parts too uh, in, in the intro and the outro, which is really, uh, because Excellent. when you're going to walk a different way, it takes caution because people have been walking the same way, you know, as you said, maybe over a million uh, steps in their lifetime, right? Yeah. So if they're going to, uh, there's the, there's the link right, right there. So you have to sign up on the, uh, it's, it's called the great discovery uh, uh, e platform and uh, it's an educational platform. Oh, yeah. And you have to sign up to get on it. You don't make sure you're not paying for anything. Just just attach yourself to the to the um, um, platform, and then you can get access to how to walk your way out of chronic pain. And uh, I've been studying walking for like way more than thirty years. When I was introduced by, you know, uh, I saw a walking video by somebody. I went, "Wow, this is just unbelievable!" And I've been, now I've been watching people walk. I can't help it. Once you once you see all the dysfunctions in walking mm -hmm. you'll all you're going to be watching everybody walk and that's what yeah. i say anyway so i i actually yeah. filmed somebody on the trail the other day he did pretty good he had um he had a pretty good gait pattern 
for, uh, you know, an older, you know, he was not a spring chicken, um, but he had a pretty good, um, he had a very good gait pattern. His upper body needed some work, but from about the diaphragm down, he looked, he looked pretty good. I was, I was, uh, and it was interesting too, because he was walking bats and I noticed him using the PNF patterns. <laughs> so, um, maybe I'll go ahead and, and, uh, Very post good. that, post that also. Um, yeah. All right. You know, I'm going yeah. to stick my uh, contact information. So if somebody has any inform questions about the walking program or, or, you know, uh, they can feel free to uh, contact me. Um, right. I'm just sticking it on there right now. Okay. Awesome. Here, yeah. Here it is. Okay. That's my yeah. information. And then I put in a drbobtalks.com. That's my digital business card, which has a lot of information about me. And so people can check it out if they like. Excellent. All right. Yeah. Anybody else before we uh, wrap it up? I just want to say thank you for all that you do for um, us. You're and, welcome. Uh, it's, it's really fantastic. Uh, you, have, you're a, you have a wealth of knowledge and a wealth of modalities. I'm really looking forward to continue, continuing to engage because I know I'm going to learn a lot too. Excellent. All right. Okay. Um, so we'll get started um, next week. Think about your reset. Okay. Think about your reset. What are you choosing? I'm going to share something personal. <laughs> I might get choked up actually. <laughs> um, I struggle and again uh, this could be you know a timeline thing in um really feeling that it's possible to get what i want not with my health right so sometimes people have great areas in their like in lot in their life where like certain things are a breeze it's like oh yeah my my health throw it at me honestly throw it i, I don't no i'm not gonna say that cancel clear delete i'm not gonna say that um because I'm, I'm not inviting, I don't, I'm choosing not to invite anything. At the same time, when I have been challenged, I have always, again, you can say always when you're speaking in the positive or in the high vibrational, I've always found my answer. In other things, not so much. <laughs> so um, in, in certain things, I can, you know, I can feel despondent or I used to feel despondent, not so much anymore um, because I, I, you know, I know how destructive that is. I know how that's definitely not going to get me to my desired result. So I use the tools that I shared with you, transmuting the energy, making declarations, um, you know, sometimes even burning things, like really, you know, getting into it. And uh, like writing things down on a piece of paper and burning it and literally transmuting that energy or, you know, meditation, you know, dissolving those timelines, not getting involved with them, but dissolving them. And uh, yeah, there's a, there's a great meditation on correct size that um, was done by Marcus Bird and his wife, Stephanie. And uh, I think it's under correct size your mind for those of you who have the membership already. And uh, it talks about timelines and there's, there's some clarification that I will have to make, but when you understand what he's talking about <laughs> with regard to timelines and stuff like that, and that's where that education and heart of the matrix will come in. Um, it is really, really, really powerful, really powerful. So I'm excited. I'm excited to share. And uh, thank you all for being here, taking time on your Sunday. And I'll see you in the course. Enjoy thank a beautiful day, everyone. Much love. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Take care.